We live in a globalized world. Um, so what are the roles and the challenges uh, that you face as students uh, today? I understood before that it was only, only for the postgraduate students, but now I understand there are many of you who are undergraduate students as well. So when it comes to, uh, when we talk about challenges, there's always opportunities that we can learn and when we, we can seize. So here, um, uh, what I prepare for you, and I'm sure postgraduate student, you study um, the Tawhid book, um, and um, for the undergraduate, maybe you also have come across the book by Ismail Raj al -Faruqi. Um, so now we, we know that um, Tawhid as a worldview is a very powerful tool for us as a very powerful principle to lead us, to guide us in today's globalized world. Because the challenges that you face today is different. So we know that there is uh, the principle of Tawhid always guide us in our intellectual and divorce, for example, in our um, um, uh, quest for any aspect of our life, spiritual life, um, economics life, uh, working life, um, social life, and so forth. So, principle of Tawhid that tells you Allah is the one who dictates the rules, and that He is the one who dictates the ethics, and that we always have to follow this, no matter what we do in all aspects. So. Um, what I'm telling you is that not everyone has the chance to study Tawhid as a worldview. If you go outside UIA and you ask your friend outside UIA, they may not understand Tawhid as a worldview. Tawhid is a guiding principle in our life. They may understand Tawhid is that believe in one God that tells you, you know, with his attributes. But then how does Tawhid as a guiding principle guide you in, for example, uh, being a student. When you face issues, how does Tawhid play its role? So uh, this is your strength, and this is what your role. You must be the one who holds that beacon. OK, thank you. Uh, the second role that you, as a UIA student, is you must be the moral voice of the community, I'm talking about UIA community, and also when you go back um, to your mahalla community, uh, to uh, your family, uh, a person who always know what is right and what is wrong, and a person who bears the good characters. Uh, why I think this is important today, we live in a world where um, it is easy to show that we are Muslim. How to show that we are Muslim? We can wear hijab, and then we can be identified as a, as a Muslim, right? But no one else would know if we are the person who carries the truth of Islam and, and being a good character and <coughs> being the person of ethics. No one would know that. But, you know, the principle of Tawhid now will tell us that every single thing Every single the second that we have and we live in this world is that we must always be the moral voice to tell ourselves this is right. The, the most important thing is we start with ourselves. Uh, a lot of times uh, the problem today is that when we, we dare to say, you know, somebody else doing wrong thing, but then we forget to actually tell us, you know what, I'm doing something wrong here, I need to get it right. Um, so, next please, thank you. Um, the strength and, uh, that I find in UIA, of course, um, maybe you can uh, challenge this idea, that we, here you are given the education that combine the traditional sciences, what I mean is that you school fiqh, um, uh, Aqidah, Hadith, Ulmul Quran, Tafsir, 
and the modern and contemporary sciences. Um, so, and for example, here uh, I'm talking about when a course is introduced, for example, I um, had experience to audit a course called <coughs> Sharia and its discontents. It's a very um, uh, charging talk, uh, course, right? Sharia and its discontents, or something that you are not happy about. Um, so the professor uh, was not talking only about what Sharia means to Muslim as a normative system, but also Sharia can also be understood and make a comparison with the, for example, civil law, the American law, for example. So when he talks about um, the punishment for the um, adulterers uh, in the Quran, Zani, was Zani to Fajidu. Uh, hundred lashes and so forth. So now that his non-Muslim student would want to know uh, that you know Islam is uh, the Quran is dictating a very harsh punishment, but the argument was not about uh, uh, about how many lashes. But he brought also the idea that um, when the Quran dictates the harsher punishment for certain crimes, actually to um, to, to give the idea or the notion that less likely people would commit it because the bigger, the, the harsher punishment, is the lesser, uh, the, 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 the less likely people would commit it. So it, also in an American law, there is a certain uh, rule that when you give harsher punishment, then you know that people will not commit. So this is um, to avoid telling to the people in the preachy way, you know, like you preach Islam is the best system and so forth. But you can say the same thing in different way. Uh, so here the strength for you is that uh, when you study um, comparative religion, right, uh, um, and so forth, and you also get to get uh, to do the minor, which is uh, what do you do, do the minors these days? Okay, I. History and psychology, my favorite subject was, of um, course, is psychology. You know, I like to study people and analyze it. All right. So. Um, the role of, um, of uh, you as a student, especially, um, I'm not talking only to the Malaysian student here. Uh, if you're from Africa, you may want to learn your local history. So for Malaysian student, Indonesian student, in particular Southeast Asian student, we must learn our <coughs> history. Because from our history, we learn about ourselves. A lot of time today, issues, for example, uh, people complain that uh, there are much more Arabization in the community today. Uh, it's related to, if we can understand our history, we will not complain about that. And, um, our history will tell us that we were much more cosmopolitan Muslim back then. Uh, we came, uh, Islam came in the 10th century, or some people argue that it, it came as early as during the, what, the, 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 uh, the caliphate time. So um, here, um, as, as soon as Islam came, it took, it took time for us to become Muslim because we were Buddhists. Right, we were Hindus, uh, and so forth. Um, so learning our history, we will learn that our ancestors learned how to synthesize cultures. We were Buddhist, now we become Muslim. It took hundreds of years, and not only that, we were also colonized for 450 years. And yet, we became as good Muslim as everyone else. So what I'm telling you is you have to have confidence of being a Muslim from Southeast Asia. And not a lot of people know about us. Um, usually when people talk about Islam, they always think that Muslims are from the Middle East. Especially when you talk uh, um, to the uh, Western uh, Hemisphere, the European, particularly the American. They think that Islam is the Middle East, and the Middle East is Islam. And they forget that they're actually the biggest Muslim country in the world is <coughs> Indonesia, with 203 million Muslims. 
that's the biggest Muslim country. You know how many that, how many people is that? Any, right? We are people. We are around 15 million. I think. 30 million population, maybe or 18 million Muslims. Okay. So it is uh, um, important that I know that being in RK, you can take courses on in history, teaching about, uh, or if you do not have the course, you still take a book and read. Um, there is this uh, very good book um, um, by Howard Fadishfield called Sultans, Saints, and Shamans. Uh, it's a, give a, a very general um, idea about Islam in Southeast Asia. You know, we cannot think of, you know, if you are Muslim in Malaysia, you cannot think that uh, you are Malay Muslim. Actually, Stanford Raffles have defined us in uh, 1800. Uh, Muslim is, he said that he found Muslim in Cambodia and then goes to uh, uh, Sumatra and Java to the Moluccas and to Borneo and then to South Philippines. And you know how big is that? We as a Malay, Malay is no longer back then as a, a, a local a, a peninsula people or Malaysian people, right? So we were much integrated. And the other day when we were um, flying from Alastar to uh, Kuala Lumpur, there was uh, this uh, section about Cham Muslims. 